my question is, that's the best diet is no insulin, don't sleep, um, keep insulin level low and high fiber because the back, um, gut bacteria need the fiber, we feed the gut. So what, what food is, is good for this diet? So, so again, I think the best, what are the best foods uh, uh, or what's the best diet to have high fiber and keep your insulin levels low? Yeah. What's, what, what, what can I eat? Okay. Oh, now insulin is a hormone that is uh, released from the beta cells when blood sugar is high. If blood sugar is not high, then insulin is not released. So keeping insulin levels low is uh, simply a matter of not having spikes in blood sugar. If you do have a spike in blood sugar, then your insulin is necessary and desirable to usher that blood sugar into the cells. Uh, the best foods, uh, of course, for slow releasing high fiber diets would be uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, a whole intact fruit has a low glycemic load in general, you know, perhaps bananas uh, and papayas are a little moderate glycemic load, but all of the berries and many of the fruits like apples and pears, actually a very slow release of sugar into the bloodstream. And they have wonderful fiber, the guars and the gums, and the pectins, the mucilage, excellent fiber. And these, this fiber, as you mentioned, goes on to uh, nourish the bacteria in our large intestine, which releases short chain fatty acids that reduce inflammation there and in the body. So uh, a good diet can easily include, now beans are very slow releasing carbohydrates, safe for diabetics, and also truly whole intact grains are, such as oatmeal or uh, millet, quinoa, uh, many of the whole grains like wild rice. Uh, rice should not be eaten more than once a week, I'm sorry to say, because it does bioaccumulate arsenic. Thank you for that. And uh, we actually have another question in coming in from Monty. I'm going to unmute Monty. Hi, yes. Monty. What's your question? Yeah. So I'd ask the first question regarding the absorption of um, nutrients. So do, would you recommend that the, if a person is obese, that they double in the nutrient dose in order to get the um, access to those nutrients? Because uh, if the fat inhibits the absorption um, capacity, uh, how, how do you deal with that until they're able to get the weight off? Okay, well, you're asking about absorption of nutrients and dosage, and this is a careful adjustment. It depends upon if you're talking, are you talking about supplementary nutrients? Yes, yeah, supplementary nutrients, like, like the ones you recommended. So if I'm taking, um, you know, like the vitamins or whatever, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're overweight, then the likelihood of absorbing it seems very low. So uh, until you're able to get the weight off, you have no guarantee that you're getting these nutrients in in the supplements, would you recommend a higher dosage or do you wait until you're able to get the weight off, which may take a while? Well, there's an optimum dosage for each nutrient. Uh, so I'd recommend the optimum dosage for the nutrient and there's an optimum form for each nutrient. So I'd recommend the optimum form. So it's, it's not a matter of just taking more. Uh, for instance, vitamin B6 pyridoxine uh, has a daily limit of 100 milligrams, and you're going to be getting that from fortified grains and cereals and packaged foods too. So uh, supplementation of that, I would recommend be 50 milligrams or less per day. Whereas other nutrients like vitamin B12, uh, sometimes some people have trouble even absorbing the supplementary forms. And so they may need up to 1000 micrograms a day, uh, which never has any toxicity or downside to it. Uh, whereas most of us on a couple hundred micrograms a day are doing just fine and our tested blood levels are, are good. Are you looking for food or supplements to help with obesity or is the problem absorbing them with obesity? Well, the, the dilemma is whether you're absorbing, I, I use supplements, but I'm wondering if I'm absorbing them and uh, I'm trying to get some weight off in the meantime. So I'm not sure if, it's, if taking these supplements make any sense or I should just wait until I'm able to get the weight off and then use the supplements, which I think then would be better absorbed at that time. So well, um, you're right. Most of these supplements on the market, I won't mention any brand names that you know, are very poorly made with the supplement. The, the minerals are in terrible forms that are poorly oxidized, poorly absorbed. And the vitamins are poorly absorbed. And there's too few to begin with. Uh, sometimes I get a good laugh when I, I read the shelves of uh, bottles and boxes of nutrients uh, 
you know, one had this live food multivitamin. And when I looked in, it had 45 milligrams of calcium. In it. It's nothing. And you might as well eat one almond. Uh, it's just too little to make any difference. And others have forms that are, are not good. So it actually, if you'd like to get my book, Vitamins and Minerals Demystified, for each vitamin and mineral, I do outline the supplementary forms and which ones are best. So you can get a, a good clue as to that. <laughs> 